Jabba the Hutt might come across as a strange character in the Star Wars universe, but he certainly wields a lot of power and influence in various story arcs. He has a slug-like appearance that is common among all creatures of the Hutt species, as well as some other physiological features that make him stand out. He was quite tall and strong, and he had even lived for a period of over 600 years before he was finally killed. Today, we'll explore Jabba the Hutt's physiological features and also tell you some fascinating things about the hut species as a whole. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. How big was Jabba the Hutt, and what made him so massive? Jabba the Hutt's physique was quite massive and he had a sluggish body shape wherein his girth matched his height. All the members of the Hutt species were known for their enormous physical size and they were around 4 meters tall and wide on average. While Jabba, as well as other Hutt characters, give the idea that their entire species is obese and huge, their young ones are quite small. And we even see Jabba's own son, Rada, as an infant. Young huts were only around one meter long, but they grew to a gigantic size over time. On the other hand, the female members of the Hut clan were quite huge, and the elder female hut, known as Mama, was around 14 feet, 10 inches tall. Of course, there was a lot of variation in the sizes and shapes of the huts, but they were typically quite massive, and Jabba's physical appearance is a defining feature of his heritage as a hut. Does Jabba the Hutt possess a skeletal structure? While Jabba the Hutt appears to be an extremely strong creature, he actually does not have solid skeletal support like most species. While the specifics of his anatomy are unknown, there is a lot of contradicting information on their structure. Star Wars The Complete Visual Dictionary does mention that the Hutts do not have a skeleton, while the Star Wars official fandom page suggests that they have a skeletal spine. This spine serves as an internal mantle that supports the Hutts' gigantic heads and huge bodies. It does seem quite strange to think that these creatures don't have a skeletal structure, especially because they have massive bodies that do need some internal support in order to move around. However, this does not seem to be a huge issue to them, mainly because they have huge tails that help them with balance and make it easy for them to travel around a planet where their legs might sink into the mush. Can Jabba the Hutt put up a good fight? How powerful is this monstrous creature? The Hutts were known as a very powerful species, and Jabba the Hutt certainly had an advantage over his opponents due to his massive size. His sheer body weight enabled him to crush his opponents in one go, and he could certainly put up a good fight. While he was not one of the strongest characters in Star Wars, he could defend himself quite well, and he was victorious in most of his face-offs with other species. He could squash his opponents to death, smack them with his tail, or even eat them, and he would go to any means necessary to defeat anyone who stirred up trouble for him or his clan. The Hutt species also came from a long line of warriors, and Jabba certainly had to engage in his fair share of fights to establish his position as a crime lord. He was also quite intelligent, and he did not need to use any weapons to defend himself. While his opponents might believe that Jabba could not fight due to his size, he actually had immense physical strength and was quite agile. With time, Jabba became slower and weaker, but he could still stand his ground and defend himself in extreme cases. In any event, Jabba's strength has not really been highlighted in the Star Wars universe until he showed up in the book of Boba Fett, where we could see just how dangerous he really was. In this series, Jabba was essentially ruling over Tatooine, and he would not accept it when someone turned down an offer to join his syndicate. When a musician hut named Geezer turned him down to join a band instead, Jabba went to great lengths to kidnap and execute him. Jabba even recruited Boba Fett to find Geezer, and Jabba essentially stirred up quite some trouble just to get back at the musician. Jabba has often appeared as comic relief in various projects, and it was quite refreshing to see him being portrayed as the dangerous criminal that he is. In Star Wars Visions, Geezer's band, the Star Wavers, even pleaded with Jabba to spare the musician's life, but they could not get past him. Jabba eventually made them obey him and later became the band's investor, and this portrayal showed just how intelligent and cunning Jabba could be. The band had to play by his rules or risk losing their lives at the hands of Jabba's enforcers, and this series truly highlighted Jabba's influence and power. While Jabba had initially been depicted as one of the most dangerous antagonists in the franchise, he was shown as a weak character over time, and Star Wars Visions and The Book of Boba Fett truly helped him regain his reputation as a ruthless villain. 
What makes Jabba the Hutt so slimy? While Jabba appears to be quite a slimy creature, he is not the only Hutt to possess this feature, and they all originated on the planet of Nal Hutta, which was known for its swampy environment. The Hutts also witnessed greasy rains and extremely hot temperatures on Nal Hutta, and their bodies soon adapted to this environment by secreting oils and mucus. As a result of this, the Hutts were quite slimy creatures, and Jabba's body is also consequently quite slippery and slimy. Jabba was used to living in a swampy environment, and he eventually settled on Tatooine because its hot climate reminded him of Nal Hutta. Could the Hutts regenerate body parts? The Hutt species also had the ability to regenerate any body part that had been injured during a fight. There were no limits to their regenerative abilities, and they could even regrow an entire brain if they needed to do so. During an encounter with a Wandrella, a member of the Hutt clan known as Gargon ended up losing an eye, half his head, as well as a huge part of his brain. Later on, it was said that he would be able to regenerate all these tissues and grow a new head over a period of one century. The regeneration process did take some time, and the Hutts couldn't instantly recover from an attack and get back on the battleground. However, this ability helped them to avoid damage in the long term and ensure that they wouldn't have to live without a body part. Was Jabba the Hutt a stinky creature? Jabba the Hutt's appearance indicates that he might not be the best at maintaining his body, and he is actually quite a stinky creature. He had quite a horrible stench surrounding him, and he was also known for feeding on stinky food. In fact, he had an entire aquarium filled with slimy animals known as Klatooine patty frogs, and he would often snack on them. Jabba often preferred to stay in hot and steamy places, which does not sound very appealing due to his stink. The anthology series titled Tales from the Moss Eisley Cantina also included a story that stated that Jabba's body often releases a slimy discharge that is quite a bad smell. Anyone who ever paid him a visit or ended up crossing paths with him had to endure his stink, and this also seems to be a common feature among the Hutts. In fact, the Jedi had even assembled a team to once rescue Jabba's son, Rada, and Anakin, being one of the members, had been quite disgusted by its smell. What is the real age of Jabba the Hutt? Jabba the Hutt also appears to have a longer lifespan than most others of his species, and the Hutts were famously known for the longevity of their species. While Jabba the Hutt was killed off on Tatooine, he was still over 600 years old at the time of his death. He appeared to be physically fine, and he even showed zero signs of aging at the time of his death, which suggests that the Hutts can easily live for a thousand years if they don't die to unforeseen circumstances. The Hutts' longevity is what helped them create a powerful empire known as the Hutt Space in the galaxy, and Jabba wielded a lot of power and influence even over the Jedi and the Sith. How do Hutts reproduce as a species? While the Star Wars franchise prefers to keep some things a mystery, the introduction of Jabba the Hutt's son left the audience quite surprised as they wondered how the Hutts reproduced. There are several theories and methods by which these species seem to produce young ones, ranging from sexual to asexual reproduction. During one story arc, we were introduced to Zero the Hutt, who had traveled to his home planet in order to meet his mother, Mama. Zero also had a father named Papa, which suggests that the two of them had come together to create Zero. On the other hand, Jabba the Hutt had produced asexually on his own to create his son, Rada. The Hutts had both male and female reproductive organs, so they had the liberty to choose which organ to use during the reproduction process. Since they had multiple reproductive organs, they were essentially classified as hermaphroditic creatures. They would later store their young ones in a marsupial pouch near their abdomen. While the Clone Wars series suggests that these creatures can produce sexually or asexually, the Hutts preferred sexual reproduction, as it created created healthier young ones. There is also a lot of debate surrounding the gender of their species, and it was initially suggested that the Hutts were all male. Over time, new female Hutts have been introduced into storylines, and one of Jabba's female cousins also featured in the book of Boba Fett. Does Jabba the Hutt eat humans? Jabba truly has no qualms when it comes to devouring other living creatures, and he'll devour anything from strange patty frogs to even human beings. In fact, he has gained quite a reputation for eating anything in his path, and he often engages in gluttony. He eats proper meals nine times a day, and he additionally also snacks on Klaatuine patty frogs, among other things. He also feeds on humans, and he often threatens people by promising that he will eat them. While he does not actually eat them, in most cases, he sometimes does. In one such instance, Jabba had fed on Norba Num in the 1995 comic Jabba the Hutt, The Dynasty Trap. 
In this comic, Norba had actually asked Jabba to kill her brother, Rusk Nung. When Jabba was imprisoned for his crime, Norba visited him and even stated that she would free him, but Jabba went ahead and devoured her body. Did Jabba the Hutt violate Princess Leia? During a particular story arc, Jabba the Hutt captures Princess Leia and he kept her around as one of his multiple slave girls. This raised many eyebrows and fans even wondered if the Hutt tried to get intimate with Princess Leia. Jabba was also viewed as a predator by most of the Hutts, but he never tried to violate Princess Leia. In fact, he only enjoyed the amount of power he could hold over his slave girls, and he enjoyed being in their company. This does not mean that he tried to get intimate with Leia, but he sure did like having her around as one of his slave girls. Jabba was also not physically compatible with Leia, and only viewed her as another ornament in his collection. He made her change into a metal bikini and viewed her as a challenge when he tried to break her will. There is also the question of whether he was even attracted to Princess Leia, as they both belong to very different species. While he did not violate Leia, he did send her to Boba Fett's chambers. However, Boba Fett refused to engage in any intimate activities with her, and he even let Leia sleep on his bed while he slept on the floor. <laughs> How did Jabba the Hutt die? Jabba the Hutt died around the age of 600 in the mainstream universe in Star Wars Return of the Jedi. His death occurred quite early in the movie, and it finally marked the downfall of this powerful hut at the hands of Princess Leia. Many events led to Jabba's death, and it all began when he tried to spread his empire beyond Tatooine. Jabba also had his eyes on Han Solo, who had once abandoned a huge shipment of spices that were to be delivered to Jabba. Solo was attacked by Imperials, and he then decided to save his life and escape, even if it meant that Jabba would suffer losses. Consequently, Jabba placed a bounty on his head, and the two of them soon faced each other once again. However, Jabba spares Solo's life on the condition that he would pay him back, and Solo later earns a huge reward after rescuing Princess Leia. While it would have been wise to pay Jabba back, Solo got caught up with the Republic while Boba Fett started hunting him down. Boba Fett then brings him to Jabba's palace while some of Solo's friends, including Princess Leia and Chewbacca, go on a mission to rescue him. Boba Fett has frozen Solo's body, and they manage to unfreeze him while Jabba finally shows up and captures them all. Jabba later decides to feed Solo and Chewbacca to the Sarlacc, which would have led to them suffering in agony until their bodies were digested over thousands of years. However, a blind Han Solo somehow manages to save himself, and all hell breaks loose when Princess Leia uses her chains to attack Jabba and even strangle him by the neck. Jabba's guards were too preoccupied with fighting Solo and the others, and Princess Leia took this chance to strangle him until he took his last wicked breath. Conclusion. To sum it up, Jabba the Hutt has some interesting features ranging from his physical size to his stink and even his ability to reproduce. He was quite an iconic character in the Star Wars franchise, and he has most certainly garnered the audience's attention due to his strange characteristics. That's it for now, but if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Thanks for watching, stay safe out there, and have a marvelous day.